Last night, the solar system held its breath. At four o'clock universal time, October 3rd, the interstellar comet known as 3I slash ATLAS swept past Mars. It was the closest approach it would ever make to any planet in its one-way journey through our system. For months, astronomers had prepared for this moment, but no one, not NASA, not ESA, not even the most seasoned comet trackers, was ready for what unfolded. As the comet's icy body slipped silently through the void, Passing just 29 million kilometers from Mars, every spacecraft orbiting the red planet turned its eyes to the visitor. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, Mars Express, M-A-V-E-N, the Trace Gas Orbiter. All of them had instruments primed. On the dusty Martian plains, rovers like Perseverance were given secondary listening duties, their sensors tuned to the faintest atmospheric changes. Humanity had never been closer to studying an interstellar traveler in real time. And for a while, everything looked normal, a dim emerald glow, a thin halo of dust, a long tail pointing back toward the sun, ordinary, until it wasn't. The comet brightened, slowly at first, then dramatically, as though some hidden switch had been thrown. Its coma expanded, glowing with an intensity that forced instruments to recalibrate midstream. Jets of gas erupted from beneath its crust, not the usual water vapor, but bursts of carbon dioxide and cyanogen, molecules rarely seen in such quantities. Spectrographs lit up with signatures scientists had only modeled in theory. To mission controllers, it felt less like a comet passing a planet and more like a visitor announcing itself. Then came the auroras. Mars, with its thin atmosphere and patchy magnetic fields, rarely hosts them. Yet in the hours surrounding the flyby, instruments detected sudden ultraviolet glows rippling across its night side. Auroras danced far brighter than any solar event could have caused. The source was traced back to the comet's passage. It was as if 3I slash ATLAS had brushed against the planet's atmosphere and left it humming. But the real shock came minutes later. Fragments began to break away from the comet's nucleus. High rise, orbiting high above Mars, caught the shimmering shards as they spiraled off. But instead of drifting in simple ballistic arcs, the fragments twisted, coiling in patterns no cometary breakup had ever produced. Some scientists described it as spiral shedding, others as coordinated drift. The more superstitious muttered a word most astronomers avoid, guided. Almost immediately, the trace gas orbiter picked up another anomaly, a sudden spike in methane in Mars' upper atmosphere. For decades, methane had been the planet's great riddle, appearing in strange fleeting bursts, then vanishing without a trace. But this time, the methane surge was undeniable sharp and perfectly timed with the comet's pass. Did 3I slash ATLAS seed Mars with exotic ices? Or did the comet's radiation awaken something already slumbering beneath the crust? No one knew, but the timing, the timing was too perfect to ignore. And then the signal, it began faint, buried in static, a low hum pulsing every 22 seconds. At first, NASA's engineers dismissed it as instrument noise. But then ESA's Mars Express confirmed the same rhythm, captured from another vantage point entirely. Two spacecraft, two instruments, same pulse. For nearly an hour, it echoed across mission logs. Not strong enough to be a transmission, not random enough to be dismissed. Plasma interactions, the official line would say later. A natural resonance between a comet's charged tail and Mars' magnetized crust. But in mission control rooms, whispers began. What if it wasn't natural? Meanwhile, amateur astronomers back on Earth 
captured their own pieces of the puzzle. The comet's glow intensified, emerald green in long exposure photographs. Normally, that glow comes from diatomic carbon, molecules energized by sunlight. But observers noted the brightness had nearly doubled after the Mars flyby, as though the comet had absorbed something from the encounter and was now burning hotter, brighter, and stranger. Speculation spread like wildfire. Some believed the comet carried interstellar organics, now mingling with Mars's atmosphere. Others suggested its spiral fragments hinted at an internal magnetic field, something comets should not have. And the boldest theory that the rhythmic pulses and strange debris patterns were the fingerprints of an engineered object, not a natural wanderer. NASA and ESA scrambled to keep the story scientific. Press releases spoke of unusual chemistry, outgassing events, and unmodeled plasma interactions. But behind closed doors, researchers debated darker possibilities. Was this truly a comet or something more? An artifact crossing our system under the guise of dust and ice? For the rovers on Mars, the encounter was silent but visible. Perseverance's sky cameras logged the faint glow overhead. Curiosity's radiation sensors picked up microbursts of charged particles. Even Insight's seismometer, though long dormant, recorded unusual electromagnetic noise, later traced back to the comet's flyby. Every machine on Mars, it seemed, felt the visitor pass. Now, the world waits for what comes next. 3i slash ATLAS continues its journey inward heading toward its closest approach to the sun on October 29th. If it already behaves so strangely near Mars, what might happen as it enters the furnace of the inner system? Will it fragment spectacularly, scattering alien dust across the solar winds? Or will it hold together, its green banner growing brighter as it races toward Earth's orbital path in December? The possibilities are both thrilling and terrifying. In one scenario, the comet breaks apart harmlessly, leaving only data and dust. In another, large fragments linger in the inner solar system, crossing orbits with Mars and perhaps, years later, Earth. And in the most unsettling theory of all, the comet's behavior is intentional. The pulses, the spiral fragments, the sudden methane surge, each one could be interpreted as signs of design. If true, then 3i slash ATLAS is not just a visitor, it is a probe. And last night's pass by Mars was a rehearsal. Imagine standing on the Martian surface during that moment, the night sky painted green by a comet's glow, auroras shimmering where none should be. Above, fragments spiraling like controlled satellites, while the thin atmosphere trembles with invisible pulses. For the rovers, for the orbiters, for the human eyes watching from Earth, it was like glimpsing a secret written into the stars, only for a heartbeat. Today, every major observatory on Earth is locked onto the comet. The James Webb Space Telescope waits for a clear view after solar conjunction. Ground-based radio arrays listen for unusual emissions. Even citizen scientists are contributing frames, logging brightness spikes in real time. The scientific community is mobilized in a way not seen since Oumuamua first slipped past our world. And yet, this is different. Oumuamua was silent, a shadow that slipped away too quickly to study. Borisov was familiar, behaving like a natural comet, but 3i slash ATLAS is neither. It brightens when it shouldn't. It fragments in spirals. It hums to Mars in rhythmic pulses. It leaves methane in its wake. It glows emerald against the dark, and it feels less like an object and more like a story unfolding, one that humanity has just begun to read. 
The coming weeks will decide what that story means. If 3i slash ATLAS survives perihelion, its next chapter could unfold dangerously close to Earth's orbital lane. And if it doesn't, if it shatters under the sun's heat, its fragments will scatter, each one carrying the same alien chemistry, the same mysteries, the same unanswered questions. But one fact cannot be ignored. After last night, Mars has been marked. Auroras, where none should exist. Methane, where none should spike. Pulses, where silence should reign. So when historians look back on October 3rd, 2025, they may not remember it as just a comet flyby. They may remember it as the night we realize that interstellar visitors do not always come quietly. That sometimes they brush against a planet and leave behind more questions than answers. That sometimes the universe knocks softly, rhythmically, just to see if we're listening. And if 3i slash ATLAS is indeed more than it seems, then last night was not an ending. It was an opening act, the first movement in a performance that stretches across stars. The only question left is whether we are the audience or part of the play. Because Mars was not alone last night, and neither are we. 